I've been through Idaho a number of times. This is my first time at the Capitol. So I want to thank all the taxpayers of this state for, for providing this beautiful backdrop for our event today. <laughs> and the bees. <laughs> now, getting here has been a bit of a challenge for me this week. As some of you heard, I was in uh, Texas for court uh, for a, a traffic stop that occurred an hour after I announced that I was running for the Libertarian nomination for President of the United States of America. Now, I did four book tours for my book, Freedom, and came through Idaho a number of times on those tours. And I chose very carefully where I ended up choosing to live afterwards in, in northern Arizona. But I, I almost decided to, to live in Idaho. It was, it, was, it was on the short list, certainly. It's not too late. It's not too late to move to Idaho. All right, fair enough. Well, I got to say, you, got, you guys think you're pretty free here in Idaho? Oh, yeah. No. Free state? No. No? Yeah. no. I think compared to the rest of the United States? No. Oh, well, in that case. Well, because hey, I, 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 I only found out today you guys have elected representatives for canal districts? Yeah. Yeah. Did, uh, sorry, is that is that raising a sore subject for some people here who care about freedom? Maybe it is. I also heard recently there were a couple truck drivers arrested driving through yeah. Idaho. Yeah, they with were. Hemp. This, you're applauding me calling this out, not the arrest of these truckers, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I'm just really glad that in all the times that I was driving through Idaho, nobody knew what I was driving through with. Right? <laughs> now, in the United States, one of the most critical points where we lose our freedom is just in our vehicles giving up the freedom of movement without permission. And that was how I got arrested in Texas. And that was why I was, I was on my way to court there on Monday when my, uh, my engine blew up and I had to scramble to get to court, scramble to get back and scramble to get here. But I wanna thank Representative Christensen, Chad, for making this worthwhile and for bringing everybody here together today. Can we give it up for Chad, please? Woo! Now this is a rally, I'm supposed to give a rally speech and make everybody cheer and scream, right? So, who likes breathing air? Yeah. Who likes eating food? Yeah. Who likes not dying and stuff? Yeah. All right, we got that out of the way, now I can talk to you like a regular person. Okay, good. There's a lot of people coming together here today. I know that we're here on the eve of the Republican Central, or Summer Central Committee meeting for the Idaho GOP. Are there are any, anybody, who's here for that? Yeah, actually, so there's some Republicans here today. Are there any libertarians in the crowd? <laughs> yeah, people who believe in freedom, I figure, yeah, it should, yeah. should be. I see some t-shirts that would, that would indicate as much. We even have some Green Party activists here represented. Yes, we do. Thank you, Joe. Are there any Democrats here? <laughs> what? Really? Are you are you kidding me? There's no nobody here's a Democrat. They don't believe in freedom. No, nope, they don't believe. Are you telling me Democrats don't believe in freedom? Really? Because I, I was gonna make a great point about freedom uniting people, and now I'm screwed. <laughs> Shit. All right. All right. Well. All right, I'll, I'll talk to some, 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 I'll talk to the people who are here then. But let's let's talk about the Democrats in this, and, and, and at least include them in spirit, shall we? Because freedom, as Chad pointed out so well, is something that is divine to the human experience, something that unites all of us, that speaks to our core humanity. And I don't think it's that. People who happen to identify as Democrats don't believe in freedom. You guys know what the definition of libertarian is, right? Someone who believes in freedom. Yes. So what does that make a Republican? You didn't think I was going to let you all off the hook, did, did you? <laughs> yeah. A Republican is someone who pretends to believe in freedom? Is that, is that cutting too deep? No, because there are people in the Republican Party who do believe in freedom. Here in Idaho, as has been pointed out, you guys have a split between the what, real conservative, is that, no, that's the spoof, is the real 
what's the actual conservative caucus or whatever they call Idaho themselves? The, we just call what? Idaho conservatives. Idaho conservatives. I think we could just call them the rhinos, right? Is that, is that fair? Thank you, Eric. So I don't think it's so much that this common ground is unique to libertarians and some Republicans so much as it's something that unites all of us. And so what we see in America today is the failure of those of us who believe in freedom to stand on principle. It is not the failure of the people who want free stuff out of government. It is those of us who recognize the American tradition, who celebrate the heritage of freedom. It is our failure that we have compromised and allowed ourselves to be forced into a centralized system where instead of saying, we can respect that you want to live differently, instead we have to fight. We have this trend of polarization now in America, right? You've all seen it. Antifa versus the alt-right to go to the extremes. That's ridiculous. Because we're all Americans and there's a certain tradition that's inherent in that that says it's okay if you want to live differently from me, I'm going to respect that. But our failure has been not standing on principle and said, saying we're going to allow ourselves to be forced into this giant system. We're going to be forced into a one-size-fits-nobody-but-the-corrupt-profiteers-of-government-corruption kind of solution. Now, y'all think that by coming out here, we're asserting our freedom. All right, I see. You can see how I'm setting that up as sort of a trick question, right? Some people are ahead of me here. <laughs> I live in a little area called uh, Juniper Wood Ranch in, in northern Arizona. And I chose to move there because it was the freest place in the country I could find. It's people who live free. They don't think about it. They don't get engaged in politics. They don't go to rallies. They don't complain. They just go out and live free. The freest people in Idaho are not the ones at this rally. I hate to break it to you. They're the, it's probably the guy out in a bunker somewhere writing a manifesto on 40 acres, right? That's the free, those are the real free people in Idaho. The freest person here today, by the way, you've probably noticed him. Three-year-old Michael running around in the green t-shirt. Absolutely. That's the freest person here today, is he not? So, what I see is the cure for this, this polarization, this centralization, this giving up of our principles, is localization. Localization is the cure for polarization. For far too long, as libertarians, we have said what we want the world to look like based on our values. We have said government should this and that and not this and not that or only this and never that. And it's wrong. The message of freedom cuts deeper than that and I would challenge and invite you all to dig deeper in your principles so that you get that confidence to never ever compromise. As individuals, we have differences in aesthetics, in how we want the world to look, how we want our communities to look, how we want our homes to be run, what freedoms that we want to enjoy as individuals. But there's an important difference between the ethics and the aesthetics. The core of libertarianism, the core of believing in freedom, is respecting the self-ownership of every single human being. Yes. And so it is wrong for any of us, even Chad, <laughs> to say government this versus government that versus government not this or that or whatever. 
It really should be, you can have as much government as you want, as long as it's voluntary, as long as you don't force it on anybody else. Who am I to say? And by the way, I'm, I'm half Jewish, if you couldn't tell. I'm, I'm also half Canadian, don't tell anybody. So the idea of white nationalism that's, that, that, that's actually becoming a, a relevant idea again in the United States scares me in, in a kind of visceral way, but I still would say to the people who want an ethno state, if you can bring people together voluntarily who want that on your own land, on private property, and you don't force your views on anybody else, you can have that. I want you to have that right. As much as I disagree with you, I will fight to the death. Because if you're not free, I'm not free. And on the other side of the spectrum, I would go, so all these gun-grabbing socialists, you want to live in a little commune on your own? Do it. Have that experiment. I want you to have that right. And I will fight to the death for your freedom to organize your community and your household as you see fit. Because if you're not free, I'm not free. That's what unites us in freedom. Now this is why I would say we should all be united, not under government, but in freedom and in the Libertarian Party. And I gotta hand it to Chad for having the guts to organize event as a seated Republican legislator and invite a Libertarian presidential candidate to speak at the state capitol. Yeah. Now some people would say, why be a Libertarian? You can't win if you're a Libertarian. And Chad, I, and, and, and to all the other state legislators here, I would point out to you, we had, in the last election cycle, we had three sitting Republican legislators change their affiliation to Libertarian. And you know what happened to them? I'll bet you know, Chad. All three of them lost. How's that for a plug for the Libertarian Party? Join the Libertarian Party and you can be losers like us too. No, that's not my point. When you stand on principle, when you run for office for the right reasons, when you stand with the party of principle, when you stand up for what you believe in and your values, you cannot lose. And that's why you should join the Libertarian Party. And that's where we unite all Americans in freedom. Because America is too good for this government. Now, there's someone I want to bring up here for a few minutes to introduce to everybody if you don't know him already. But this is someone who has done something you've probably heard of. And I would wager that most people here today understand the significance of what he did. But most Americans don't. To most Americans, Eric Parker is just the gun on the bridge. Just some crazy right winger with a gun pointing it at federal agents. Probably because he's got a couple screws loose. But I would bet that anybody who's here today who has a real appreciation for freedom knows why he did what he did and understands what it takes to do what he did and understands the conviction that it takes to do what he did. So ladies and gentlemen, please, round of applause. Round, warm round of applause for the gun on the bridge, Eric Parker. Quite the introduction. So I want to tell you a story about Adam. I'm not going to get up here and tell you about me. I want to tell you about how Adam Kokesh made me a three percenter. So I was just a young, you know, activist watching what was going on. And, and I, I see this video online and it's at the uh, Jefferson Memorial. Oh yeah. 
and there's a sign that says no dancing. So this combat vet said, why can't we dance? <laughs> and I watched as they, he, he organized and he brought people, they put on headphones and they danced. Now what happened next is what made me a three percenter. Because this man showed that no matter how irrelevant the law is, how silly the law is, at some point, the state will use force to make sure you comply. And they did. They grabbed him, they body slammed him, and they kicked, they kicked his butt. Now at that time, I realized something. It clicked for me. No matter how irrelevant the law is, or how wrong the law is, they will use force. That means we can take every law, every, we're talking about state codes and stuff lately, right? Every one of those, full effect and force of law. That means they will eventually, if you do not comply, they will beat you. They will hurt you, and they will kill you. That's a fact. And Adam Kokesh taught me that. And when I was up on the bridge, I saw it. So, you know, I didn't know I was going to come up here and talk today, but we have to know that they'll use force. And we have to know that we're our brother's keeper. Right. There's nothing to fear but fear himself. When Adam said, if you're not free, I'm not free, I remember him saying that. I say it. It's true. If Clive and Bundy wasn't safe in his rights, then I'm not. If the small miner up north isn't safe in his rights, I'm not. And we have to mobilize. We have to be prepared to put down what we're doing in our lives and defend each other. You know, I love those Health Freedom Idaho girls. Because I just stand behind them and I say, I say, when tyranny becomes law, rebellion becomes duty. talked about. I'm worried too. I'm worried. I'm worried for your families. I'm worried for my family. And when I stand up and I go, hey guys, it's time. We're not going to let them do that. I hope every one of you comes and I hope you bring your families and I hope you bring your friends because we're not going to comply. Today was my second time of having the honor of meeting Eric in person, but the last time was in a courtroom where he was in shackles and a little bit forcibly isolated from the rest of us, so it's really great to be able to actually get to spend some time and, and really get to know the man, the myth, the legend. I, I can't, what a world we live in, where you can just dance, where they tell you not to dance, and the next thing you know, you got an armed rebellion on your hands. <laughs> Are there any uh, any other military veterans here today? I would say thank you for your service, but I think it's more appropriate to say I'm sorry for your servitude. And it's a tough thing to accept how badly we've been lied to when it comes to foreign policy, when it comes to militarism itself. There's one thing I love so much about the three percenters and about what it means to really be an American because the founders of this country, and I make a distinction between the founders who said, screw you to the king, we're not gonna take this crap anymore, and the framers who screwed that up by creating a new central authority here under the Constitution when we were better off under the articles beforehand. Now, the framers were not the same as the founders, but among the founders, most of them were against the very idea of a standing army because they knew from their experience in Europe that having an army as opposed to a militia of, by, for the people actually makes you less safe. The founders of this country knew that the best, most efficient, and only legitimate defense for a free people is a well-armed 
population that refuses to be governed by anybody. Now I want to share a quick tragic story from my time in Iraq. I was in Fallujah in 2004 with the Marine Corps Civil Affairs team. I was a driver on our six-man team. And at one point during the siege of Fallujah, we were called to do a medical evacuation for a Marine who had been shot through the armpit hole of his flak jacket. And it turns out that the bullet had lodged near his spine. So we scrambled to get to his location. And I was in the vehicle behind the Humvee that he was loaded into. And we raced away from Fallujah to the nearest medevac center. And we drove as fast as we could through the cement barricades to get this Marine to a surgical tent the whole time. I was watching the corpsmen who were in that vehicle scrambling to save this Marine. And when we got to the medevac center, and it was time to unload the stretch that he was on, the Marines who went to go open the tailgate on that Humvee couldn't open it because of the weight of the water and gas cans that were on the rack on the back. Since I was right there, I run out and I go and I lean up against it and we release the latches and get the tailgate dropped and we pull that Marine out and next thing you know I'm on the side of the stretcher helping carry him into the surgical tent. And he was moaning in pain and you could see that he was fading in and out and at one point he flailed his arm off behind him off the stretcher. And that kind of shocked me back into realizing that this is a human being right here. I put his arm back on the stretcher and nobody was saying anything so I told him the only thing I could think of. You made it. You're going to be okay. But it turns out that the bullet had lodged near his spine and severed an artery and he was just minutes away from dying from internal bleeding. And the tragedy of Lance Corporal Frank, not that he died fighting for his country, fighting for freedom, fighting for justice, because we know that's a load of crap. We know now, in hindsight at least, Hard to deny, Lance Corporal Frank died for lies. He died for bankers and politicians and war profiteers. And I risk my life for the same cause. It doesn't make it any easier to admit it. But if you dig deep enough on principle, without fear, you will be amazed with the conviction that you find when you get to that point and without fear you're able to admit the unvarnished truth to yourself about how evil the federal government as an institution has become. The tragedy of the death of Lance Corporal Frank was that he died as a soldier thinking that he was a warrior. This is the difference between the standing armies that the founders warned us about and the militias that they advocated as the legitimate defense for a free people. A soldier is someone who puts on a uniform follows orders and does what they're told no matter what, whether it's in the best interest of freedom and justice or not. A warrior is someone who's willing to risk their life 
to do the right thing. It's a very important distinction, the difference between soldiers and warriors. Eric Parker is a warrior. Chad Christensen is a warrior. And all of you here today are warriors for freedom in a way that cannot be matched by putting on a uniform and following orders. You are the real warriors and the real heroes for freedom in this country. Do we have someone behind me? No? You... <laughs> I see what's going on there. So this distinction between soldiers and warriors, this is the awakening that's happening in America right now. This is the shift that we are experiencing. For those of you who aren't familiar with my campaign or my platform, I encourage you to go talk to any of the people wearing Adam Kokesh t-shirts or the Freedom t-shirts here that match our logo. It's on the front of my book, Freedom. I was asked in 2012 at the Bilderberg Conference in Virginia by Jason Burmis, the original info warrior. We were debating freedom versus statism. And he said, oh yeah? Well, what would you do if you were president? And at first I went, <laughs> well, what would I do if I was president? And then I thought about it seriously. And I said, oh, okay, what would I do if I was president? I would quit go home, get a real job. I would only get rid of three parts of the federal government. <laughs> the three branches. My platform is based on this principle that if someone hands you the ring of power, by the way, this is how we get the nerd vote, is Lord of the Rings references. When someone gives you the ring, of the, the ring of power, you don't put it on, you throw it directly into the fire. My platform is the peaceful, orderly, responsible dissolution of the United States federal government, leaving us with 50 independent states, up to 562 sovereign native nations, a true free defense force and an America that is that much more free and principled. Localization is not just the only principled way we return to our roots as Americans and respect for each other's freedoms and right to self-determination in communities, but it's also the cure for this ridiculous polarization that we're experiencing today because we have forgot the very premises on which this country was founded. So finally, I want to bring Chad up here for just a second. Chad, if you can come up here, please. Everybody, can we give a round of applause to a man who can quote Adam Kokesh and the Bible in the same street? I gotta love that. Now, in preparing to come out here, I, I did a little research. It, this thing really doesn't like. You got like, he's got. He's wearing a wire. <laughs> In preparation, coming out here, I read some of the media reports about Chad. Chad, what? I, and by the way, it's it's, it's the Post Dispatch, Idaho Falls Post Register. Holy crap! Fake news and CNN. Chad, what's the worst thing they've said about you? I'd call it extremist, uh, dangerous. That label is wild animal. Wild animal. Animal! <laughs> well, that's probably the gist of it. I think just extremist. Uh, you know, I, I associate myself with people like Adam and Harry Parker, so I, I'm a dangerous legislator. Label <laughs> Hey, I just want to say, for everybody who's here, if you live in his district or anywhere, what's your district, Chad? 32. 32, it's the southeast corner of the state. If you're anywhere in the area, you are lucky to have a man like this 
in your state house. Make sure he stays there. So Tammy, I'm really grateful for what you said about label lynching. It's really a great way of exposing that crap for what it is. Label lynching. I want to use that. I want to promote that. I want to underline that. Because it really just takes the wind out of all their sails when they say, oh, well, we disagree with you, therefore you're an extremist. Well, that's because you don't have an argument that you have to resort to that. You can't argue against freedom. You can deny it. You can resist it. You can insult it. You can fight the people who stand up for it. But freedom is not something you have to go out and, and get from somebody else. It is inherent in all of our humanity. It is that which unites us. It is that which brings us here together today, right? So on that note, I think we're going to talk about going and enjoying some freedom after this. Head over to the Matador for a little... little I understand there's some people in Idaho who don't drink. That's okay. You're welcome to come and party with us too. I understand there's some people in Idaho who don't smoke cannabis. I know that's shocking, right? But you're welcome to join us too. And finally, I'll end on this note because uh, I am running for up for public office. Uh, please join the Libertarian Party. Get active in the Libertarian Party. If you're a Republican who's not a rhino, there's a home for you where you don't have to fight the other half of your party. And we can bring people together, not just conservatives and libertarians, but liberals, people like Green Party activist Joe here, who's about localization, who wants that power restored to our communities. And the Libertarian Party can be the mechanism that unites all Americans, and you don't have to give up your Republican Party membership chat. In fact, you can have it both ways. You can be a member of, you can be an elected Republican, be a member of the Libertarian Party. But because I'm, uh, I'm playing this silly political game and running for office, I have taken a lesson from those who are good at winning elections. Now, you've heard elections described as advanced auctions of stolen goods, right? This is why libertarians can't win. Hey, I'm not going to steal anything from you to give it to you, so, I mean, why pay $500 for something when you can give the government $600 and then get it for free? Sorry, we're not going to play that game. But... I do like giving away free stuff, so at least I have free stickers for everybody here tonight. Please come get one. My name is Adam Kokesh. I'm running for the Libertarian Party nomination for president. Please get active, stay involved, keep loving, keep fighting. Join the party, lp.org, and we'll see you at the Matador. Thank you very much. Adam versus the man is made possible with support from SmartCash. Check out smartcash.cc to find out more about this powerful, business-focused cryptocurrency that is fast, easy to use, and community-centric. Smart Cash is designed to be securely used for day-to-day -day transactions and put the currency back in cryptocurrency.